want 2018 to be the year that your creative life absolutely takes off for you. I'm Irish artist Roshan O'Farrell and welcome back to the Love to Paint group. It's fantastic to see you back. I hope you had a great Christmas and you're ready to start 2018. So today we're going to do a challenge. We're going to do a New Year goal setting challenge to help you not just make big plans and then let them sort of peter out, but actually make sustainable plans for your creative life for 2018. And I have a worksheet for you to help you structure your thinking, follow it through, and also something that you can come back and look at again and again when you need to, because the best plans are plans that we come back to and we revise. Plans are no use when you do them once and then you leave them and life changes and everything happens and they become out of out of uh, use for us. Hi Leela, how are you? So um, yeah, so we're not going to do the kind of New Year's resolutions. Have you actually, Leela, have you got any New Year's resolutions? I know some people talked about, um, who was it I saw there? Lynn had some New Year's re resolutions for getting out and doing some plein air painting. Uh, I think she was looking to sort of loosen up and do some different things. So do you have any New Year's resolutions for your painting practice for the next little while? So if you do, let me know in the comments here and I'll read them as we go along. So, okay, so the key really to making plans that are that can be sustained are that they need to be realistic. Okay, they need to work actually in your life. Otherwise, they're pie in the sky. They need to be clear. You know, you need to be, they not, you know, not so highfalutin and, and complicated that you can't even keep them in your head. And they need to be focused. And that, we're going to talk about narrowing your focus because that's really important. And then the next thing is that we need to adjust it. And I was just talking about that as we go along and I'll come back to it. Hi Louise. Um, okay, so if you haven't done the masterclass in a while, the Honest Truth Masterclass, can I encourage you to either go back and do it, now is a perfect time of year to do that and to, to figure out what your, your priorities are. Um, uh, Miriam, you're going to be doing finish a painting once a month. That's brilliant. One painting a month. That's a good one to have and it's clear. That's a good resolution to have. Um, so if you haven't done the masterclass already, please, I would really recommend that you go back and do that. Now, the masterclass is just uh, four videos. It takes no more than about 15 minutes or just over. It's absolutely free and there's a link to it in the notes for this video. So pop it on there and do that. That will really help you to get some clarity in what you need to be an artist, whether you're starting or whether you've been doing this forever. Hi Lorna. Okay, so let's um, have a look at what's involved in the masterclass and really my kind of my manifesto, which is to feed your creativity, to learn your craft and to do the work. So in these three areas, they are essential for us to really be an artist. And so if you're not paying attention to all three of those, something's going to give. You're going to get tired, you're going to get stuck or you're not actually going to achieve anything. And so the masterclass will help you to get your head around that. But the trick is to narrow your focus in each area and to do one thing at a time. So let's have a look. I have a downloadable uh, worksheet for you that you can work through that will help you work through this challenge. Um, and we're gonna have a look at each of the areas in turn. So, um, Marion, you were saying, Eileen, uh, lots of exercises for the bin and a painting a month. That's a really good one. Leela, I think you're really definitely ready for a website, so I think that's a good one for you. Okay, now, um, so let's look at feeding your creativity. So, in these three areas, in order for you to really thrive in 2018, let's have a look at how you can make plans for each of them. I'm not going to tell you what you need to do in 2018 in order for you to thrive. That information is already in your gift. You already know the answer to this. This worksheet is just going to help you to, to structure thinking and gain some clarity for what you need to do. 
So the first thing that I want you to do in the feeding your creativity uh, sheet is to do a little brainstorming. So think what did you love to do or you still love to do that feeds your creative soul? So is it music? Is it getting out in nature? Is it playing with paint? Is it doing things that don't have an expectation? Is it reading? Is it poetry? You know, what is it that gets you set on fire creatively? So it doesn't have to be the doing part of painting. It just needs to be something that feeds that bit of you so that there is a rich creative life from which you will find inspiration. And if we don't pay attention to that, if we're not actually feeding it, then we'll have nothing to say and nothing to give. So make a list on your sheet. Just scribble down a whole list of things that you love to do, that maybe you used to do, you don't do anymore, you'd love to do. And once you have that list made, then choose something that you can do every week this year. Now, you can change this plan. So maybe you'll say, I want to do this for... Uh, the first six months or the first quarter, the first term, whatever it is, but make a plan for uh, choose one thing. Now, the key here is that it's small, a small thing, because if you say I'm going to go to the opera every week, it's not going to happen. Well, maybe it will, but it's not going to happen in my life. So, you know, one small thing that you can do every week. Now, for me, it's probably going to be walking. You know, January is a great time, but I walk all the way through the year and it's, it centers me and it grounds me. So my one thing is I'm going to walk at least once a week, but hopefully more likely it'll be four times a week. Um, it could be I'm going to listen to one podcast a week that feeds my soul or I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, pick one small thing. It needs to be small because if it's going to be done weekly, it can't be something that's too taxing on your life or it's just simply not going to get done. Now, uh, in addition to that, I want you to list three things here on this side of the sheet of things that you can do in January to feed your soul. Now, maybe it's I'm going to meet a friend for coffee or a walk because we're trying to lose weight, <laughs> you know, or maybe I'm going to go to the movies or I'm going to order that art book that I really loved and I, I, I was eye candy or I'm going to read that art book that I got for Christmas or maybe I'm going to go hear some live music or, um, you know, visit a gallery, an exhibition. Um, you know, uh, I'm just, I'll come back and read these are going so quickly. <laughs> Lorna, you're continuing your affair with creativity. So list three things here on the sheet that you can do in January and put a date on it. So make a plan, get your diary out and say, okay, I'm going to do this, but when am I actually going to do it? You know, text your friend and see, will they come with you? Um, you know, make a plan, lunchtime, in the week after next, on Wednesday, I'm going to pop into that gallery that I, I always uh, pass by. So make a plan for three things you're going to do. Remember to make them doable. If you're going to say, I'm going to go visit the Louvre, or I'm going to, you know, do something that's, that's going to take up a lot of time, you know, January, the weather's bad, we're busy, you know, make it realistic or it won't get done. Okay, so the next part of the workbook is um, to is, is the learn your craft area. Now, those of you who are taking my um, course with me, my online course, the Love to Paint, Learn to Paint course, are still working away at that. And so maybe for you guys, it'll be a continuation of the modules or finishing up or going back over. I know lots of you have finished and come January 6th, they're planning to start over again and work through it again and pick out different bits. So similarly to what we did in the first uh, page, I want you to brainstorm. So again, big list of things that um, areas of your practice that you would like to improve. So it might be I would like to improve my values or I would like to work on desaturation, or it could be I would like to work on my sketching, or I'd like to improve my color theory. So whatever area it is that you feel you want to improve on, make a list of them. It does, they can be small little things or they can be big things. Just brainstorm it, get them all down onto a bit of paper here in the workbook. And once you've done that, um, choose just two of them. 
just two of them to prioritize. Again, they don't have to be big, they can be small things. Just pick two small things that you would like to work on, or it could be a, a big thing as well. And then on the other side of the sheet, make a list of ways that you can learn this year. So for instance, if you decided that you wanted to work on your sketching, you might do a five day challenge where you're gonna sketch every day. You're going to maybe get a sketchbook and bring it with you, pop it in your purse or, or your bag and bring it everywhere you go, on the bus, you know, on the train, in front of the TV. And just for that week, maybe just concentrate on sketching with no expectation, just working on it. It could be that you decide I'm gonna do a workshop this year, I'm gonna plan it for this summer or for March or for whenever. It could be that you will take a class or an online class. It could be that you will just learn with a friend, go and visit a studio, watch an artist paint. Make it realistic, realistic so that it will get done and write that down on your sheet. Now, the final worksheet that I have for you is on doing the work. And again, all of these things are working together. So the idea is that you don't bite off too much in one particular area and then you have no time, no energy left for anything else. So keep it small and keep it focused. So in the do the work um, worksheet that I have for you here, once again, brainstorm. So what would you really like to achieve in your practice this year. So even just here in the comments, let me know, is there one thing that you would like to achieve? Leela was saying she wants to get a website up and going. Um, uh, Lorna, you were saying sketching on newspaper, great idea, and you're going to incorporate that into your schedule. So it could be that you want to increase the volume of your art this year. So maybe, maybe you painted 10 paintings last year and you want to do 15 this year. Maybe you want to enter a competition, an art competition. Maybe you wanted to exhibit in an art fair. Maybe you want to put up a website or, or be active on social media. Noreen, you just want to get back into painting. Um, you know, maybe you want to improve your sales, you know, so what is it that you want to achieve in 2018? And it can be lots of things, but small and big, again, brainstorm them. It isn't even about doing them all, but the thing is that once you get one or two or three, do two of these things done, you can come back to this worksheet and say, okay, I've done that, tick, <laughs> it's very satisfying. And come back then and sort of see, okay, what else is on my list? Um, Anna, you'd love to start framing some of your work uh, that you have sitting looking at every day. So pick a couple of pieces that you're particularly happy with or proud of and concentrating on getting just those few pieces done, maybe two or three of them. And um, look at inexpensive options or if you have the budget, go to a proper fame framer and actually bring the paintings with you and they will help you and advise you as to what looks good. Um, okay, so the next thing to do is once you have chosen what it is that you want to do, say it's Leela and you want to have a, uh, get a website going. So you choose one thing, right? So the website is the thing for Leela, okay? Pick one thing at a time. Most of us are, you know, taken with this whole idea of multitasking. And women, I think we're sold a pup when it comes to multi, multi, multitasking because in a way we're forced to do it so much because life is so busy for us and because there's so many demands. But really it's much, much better if you can to do one thing at a time. When your attention is divided and you have to um, do one thing and then you're switching your focus to another thing and then to another thing, each time you're switching your focus, you're losing time and energy because you have to kind of re-gear the cogs to deal with the other thing. Now, I know in life, there's lots of times that we've got no choice about that and we just have to do it. But in planning, in you setting out to achieve things in your artistic practice this year, do it one thing at a time. You don't have to do everything at once. If you wanna get a website up, if you want to get a Facebook page, if you want to get some paintings framed, if you want to do an art fair, if you decide to do them all at once, in six months time, you'll end up with a lot of stuff half done and you'll be deeply frustrated. So pick the thing that's the most important to you, the thing that you want to work on first, do that and then move on to the next thing. 
Um, Lauren, are you going to create a little gallery in the B&B? That's a fantastic, and you've got so many work that would work really, really well in the B&B. Okay, so once you've chosen your one thing, so say it's Leela with the website, right? She's decided she's going to create her website. So the next thing to do is to break that job down into steps. Um, so in each step, it's sort of like, well, what do I need to do first? Well, the first thing I <laughs> need to do is decide, um, am I going to build it or is somebody else going to build it? Okay, so Leela, you might tell me, are you going to build it yourself or are you going to get somebody else to build it? If I'll wait until she answers so we can, we can go real time <laughs> with this particular question. But it could be anything that you want to do. So break the job itself down into steps and then start with step one. If you are trying to do everything, uh, even within one project, it's too much and it's completely overwhelming. So one thing at a time. Um, yes, Anna. So, um, okay, so say it's a website. So say, Leela, you decide that you're, going, you're not going to do that yourself. Well, then the que next question is, uh, Elaine, you're in the same boat, is who's going to build it for you? Leela, you're going to do it and your husband can help. Okay, that's where we're at now. Right, the next step will be you will need to decide how you're going to build it. I use WordPress. Um, there's WordPress.com or WordPress.org. Um, you know, WordPress.org is gives you much more freedom, but you need to be a bit more techy. There's Squarespace, which is super simple, and that's a really good option. There's also Weebly, and there's all sorts of other um, website options. So you'll need to decide what how you're going to build it, depending on your techy stuff. Then the next thing is you're going to have to have some images, some good quality images of your work, good quality image of you. You'll need some copy, in other words, a little bit about you, nothing too pretentious, all in the first person. And you'll need a couple of pages, a contact me page, a gallery page, an about you page, and anything else you want on top of that is, is a bonus. So the first step you will be starting with, you've already done the first step, you've decided you're gonna build it yourself with your hobby, you're gonna to need to research that and decide how you're going to do it. So when you have step one figured out, then you build, break that up into steps or into tasks. So the first is who's going to research um, which website? Are you both going to do that? So, you know, maybe your husband would do that if he's going to be doing a lot of the website building. You know, maybe you'll look at some YouTube videos. So the first task might be, and I, I would do this, um, is to look at some YouTube videos on the various options of how to build a website. That's your first task. So. The idea is to take a big thing like building a website, break it down into steps and then break each step down into tasks and then just to do one task at a time. Once you have one thing done, tick it off the list. If life happens and it takes you a little while to get to step two, that's fine. But keep ticking along. As long as you're moving forward, you're moving forward. It doesn't matter how slowly you're going, you're actually achieving something. And by taking it in that approach by steps and then by tasks and doing them one at a time, you will get there. Leela, both of you, well, that's a good idea. Although you may have conflicts of interest with both of you doing things. So, okay, so um, let me know in the comments here, what is your one thing that you are going to do as a habit, as a routine in your life to feed your creativity every week? So let me know in the comments there where I can see you. What are you going to do in your life regularly to feed your creativity? And have a wee think about that. Um, the next thing is in the learning your craft, what key thing are you going to do to learn your craft in the next little while so just let me know here in the comments and then finally on the doing your work what is the one task the one job the one thing you want to achieve for 2018 in your creative practice so let me know what those three things are under the feed your creativity learn your craft and do the work so that is our challenge so let me know how you're going to get on with this okay so take a little bit of thinking uh, Kate, you're going to take some photos. I presume that is your feeding the creativity uh, task. Uh, Noreen, you're going to have Tuesdays as your art day. Um, Anne-Marie, sketch something small every single day. I think that's a 
fabulous, uh, fabulous practice to have to do every day. Um, okay, Lorna, I know, is also going to do the, the sketching on newspaper as well. That's another really good one. Okay, um, let me see, Amy. Get out every lunchtime, have a break from the office. A really, really healthy thing to do, go for a walk. Uh, Anna is going to paint every week, no matter what it is. Finish a canvas a month and sell a painting this year. Best of luck, there's no reason why you couldn't. Um, that's a really, really good aspiration to have and I can see that happening without any problems. Okay, so the key is, uh, so just to remind you, just down uh, uh, in the com, uh, not in the comments, but on the information for this um, session, I have the download link. So literally, if you just click on that, you can download the worksheet to help you get through that, um, that exercise, that challenge. Um, Leela is going to paint one or two paintings every week and you have already got a fairly good regular practice Leela so I think that's really good. Gigi you are looking at 30 paintings in 30 days challenge that's a challenge in the states with um, names gone out of my head which is awful I can't remember her name somebody will remind me uh, Leslie Leslie Seta and it's basically um, 30 small paintings in 30 days. So a painting every day for 30 days. So it, if you aren't set up in a routine, it can be difficult to achieve. But if you are set up in a routine and you're regularly painting, even if you're not regularly painting, but if you're set up in a routine, it's a great one to do. Just keep it small and just keep painting and you never know where that comes from. Louise is gonna do some art every day. Sketching, reading, Google, painting uh, painting in February. Fantastic, good goal to have. I hope the healing is coming on, Louise. Right, so the key is brainstorm. Um, follow your heart with that, follow your passions, follow your curiosity, follow your needs and your interests in the brainstorming part of the, of the challenge. Then narrow down your focus, make it realistic, make it doable, and then choose one thing and do one thing at a time. Nadia, you've done 100 paintings in 100 days. Oh my God, that's a lot of paintings in a lot of days. That is fantastic. Uh, finally then, on the goal setting, the key with this is to readjust it. So, you know, do the challenge now. It's January and we're all keyed up to get some, some planning done. But then come back to it, you know, in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months time. When you things have sort of moved on and you've got into the sort of, you know, just working on things and life happens and all the rest of it, come back to your worksheet. Look at what you have written down. Put your worksheet up, put a spruce table in it and stick it up on your board somewhere. And in a couple of months, come back and review it and say, okay, I got that done. I got that done. I got that done. I only got half of that done. I didn't get any of that done. What's now important to me? So rejig your priorities, keep it realistic, keep it small and come back and readjust it. It's like, you know, when you're trying to stop smoking, you know, when they say, if you have a cigarette, you don't think I'm back on the smokes. You think I had a cigarette, you know? So if you find that life happens and you didn't get through all of the course you wanted to do, just refocus and say, okay, maybe I took on too much. Maybe this thing happened and that thing happened, but things are a little bit easier now and I come back to it. Or maybe what I need to do is do a little less, have a little ex but less expectation and maybe do this part of it every week instead of all of this every week. Okay, so readjust as you go. Uh, post your goals here in the group. So when you have done your worksheet, uh, set your goals for 2018 come back into the Love to Paint group here and just put up a post and tell me what are your goals for 2018 to feed your creativity, to learn your craft and to do the work. And don't forget the masterclass if you haven't already do it, done it to do that. So guys, that's it for today. Um, the only other thing I want to mention to you is that the um, my workshop is coming up for any of those who want to do that in February 2nd, it's only a few weeks away, uh, February 2nd to 4th. It's been full about six times and we've had a couple of cancellations and I had a cancellation this morning. So there is one spot left, it's open on the website if you're interested in that. 
um, I will have a the Love to Paint, Learn to Paint course will be opening again in uh, at the end of March, the very end of March, and we will be going again for another 12 weeks with a new group. So if you are interested in that, keep an eye here. There'll be plenty of news about that as it comes along. So guys, um, that has been fantastic. Look, I just want to say, I hope you had a lovely Christmas and I hope you're really enjoying just the whole idea of getting back into your studio, getting back into painting. I did my first paint, well it's not finished yet, my first painting is on the easel. I started painting today, I was doing some sort of desk work yesterday and today I found, I found it actually quite difficult to start painting today. I don't know how you feel about starting back after a break. For me, when I've had quite a big break, which I did because various things happened before Christmas, um, <laughs> thank you, Marianne, let's just say don't miss the glass. We have great fun. Um, so yeah, I, I started this morning and I got up early and it was so dark and everybody else was asleep, the kids were anyway. So I found it hard and I just had to take my own advice, which was just do one thing. You know, so I prepared my canvas, my palette was in a complete state, I didn't clean it very well before Christmas, so I cleaned that, that was another thing, and got a cup of tea, and I put the music on, and slowly but surely I found myself painting, and this painting is nearly done, so I'll finish it now, if there's a little bit of light left I'll finish it now, and otherwise I'll finish it tomorrow. So guys, um, really good to see you all, let me know if any of you are interested, there's one spot left in that workshop, otherwise for those of you are looking to do a course with me the online courses in March but in the meantime we'll be getting back into doing these trainings on feeding your creativity of learning your craft and doing the work all the way through the year there is um, I'm starting to harvest these videos cut them back a little bit because I waffle on an awful lot and then put them up on my website and I have the very first of those that's already gone up on my website so if you look on my website which is learnwith.roshinofarrell.com and look under free you'll see free videos and the first one is already there so for that's it for today have a great day happy painting